Today's video is going to be about adding the second box to your primary character and today's video is, is specifically for casters. So this is going to entail good second boxes for you to start or to build together, to grow together, to duo together. That's good for casters. And then what I'll do later on is I'll make, if you're a melee character, what my top favorites are for the second box. A lot of people are looking to pick up an extra character, a second box to make their life easier, maybe have another character to play. So two boxing is really not unrealistic and it does not take a lot of resources to do. If you've watched any of my power leveling videos, you've probably seen all the little mini PCs I have set up around. They're really cheap, $150, get you set up, monitor, keyboard, mouse, and you're two boxing. Relatively cheap to add a second box, especially when we're paying, you know, $15, $10 a month if you're black marketing chronos. For the first pick, I have chosen the Bard. And you know, being a caster, Bards have mana regen songs, which is often vital for a caster. But what the Bard also has is Mesmerize, which is a great form of crowd control. It also has insane run speed buffs, like the fastest movement speed you can get in the game is from a Bard. So you put your Bard on follow, shit goes bad, you pop cellos and you just take off and outrun the mobs. Literally nothing's gonna catch you. The only problem you're going to run to is if something summons. You also have the ability to pull early on. It might be uh, tag something and snare it, run out of range of the mob. Then the other character you're playing might tag it. As the game progresses and they get fading memories, you'll be able to just pull something, fade, and eventually split pull like a monk with feign death. So they can also charm mobs. So say you pull three mobs and you're taking one of them on and then you have two more to deal with. Well, maybe you don't want to mesmerize or try to mesmerize both those with the bard because it'd probably be a pain in the ass. So what you do is you charm one and have it fight the other one instead. So there's a lot of different things you can do with the ability to charm. Bards can also debuff, they can snare, they can slow, and they have a lot of utility. Thinking like having to have a Pegasus cloak or some type of levitation early on, bards have levitation songs and invis songs. So you don't need any of those cloudy potions or ways to levitate. If you're a caster, you probably already have levitate and maybe invis already. Not so much a big deal, but it does take up space on your spell bars. So if you could unmemorize those and put something else up instead, maybe some more damage and then have on your bard songs, you maybe have the invis and levitate spells fairly available. They also have aquatic lungs so that you can breathe underwater. I mean, the utility of the bard is just amazing. And you know, they can do things like pick lock, etc. So bard is gonna be the number one choice with your caster for me. Moving on to number two, is an enchanter and obviously if you're playing an enchanter you don't want to make a second enchanter you want to pick something else like a bard or any other options in this but for me number two is the enchanter and that is because as a caster enchanters have mana regen buffs they have cc and stuns so no matter what you pull they can usually take care of it and help you split a camp for early on in the game they can charm and they are the lead dps pretty much with charm pets in the game so you could actually use them in spots primarily and have your other character be backup and assist with the charming they have little baby nukes and some, some damage over time spells. They can also cast haste, which would be good if you're playing a pet class. They also have, obviously, root and levitation buffs, but if you're a caster, like I said, you may have those already. Number three, the druid. Now, to be honest, when I started making this list, I had the druid as one of those like honorable mention characters, but then I realized how good they actually would be to support a caster. And the thing that really tipped them over the edge is that they have mana regen in the form of their HP buffs. Protection of series is an HP buff, but it also has mana regen as you start to get protection of the cabbage, like some of those level 60 spells. And on, there's a mana regen factor to that. So that could actually help you out significantly. They also have run speed buffs. They can port you places. They can evac if shit goes wrong. They got levitate, snare, root, and viz, all that fun stuff that's utility wise. Nukes and dots are subpar, but they're not as bad as like say the enchanter. Uh, they can animal charm and they also have damage shields which could be helpful for your pet to cause a little bit extra damage and make things die a little faster and number four shaman and the only reason i put this here at all instead of honorable mentions is because if you are a pet class the shaman will to buff the shit out of your pet which should be extremely well so what you get with them if you're not a pet class is actually relatively mediocre you get some hp buffs so they have a pet for dps they can slow which really doesn't matter unless you're using some type of pet to tank obviously if you're a caster and your root dotting or nuking things or kiting things that that's not really going to help you out that much unless you're planning on getting hit but it really shouldn't be and then they also have uh, the root and levitation spells and what really got them here too is not just for pet classes but they have run speed buffs which is so key early on in the game that's my top four everything else has like its own you know i call it the honorable mention section because there is a function of them that will actually help you out even though it may not be the greatest cleric for example can cast resurrection and if something goes bad and somehow the cleric survives they have the best hp ac buffs and they can heal you could be useful if you're getting hit like i said uh 
you shouldn't really be getting hit as a caster. So some of these have limited use. The Necromancer, and the reason that is here is because I think it might be somewhat easy to set up a macro to pet attack and cast dots and nukes, but also because the Necromancer can feign death, which may help you pull and split camps. So that's how the Necromancer made this list. And the Wizard would be a good second box. You can port, evac, and it can pretty much sit with a macro and just cast nukes and help you do some damage. So that does have some use. And then we move on to Magician, same thing. You get things like Call the Hero, where you can you know, get your mage down somewhere and then summon your character out so you don't have to run two to the same spot. But you also have the Mage Pet for tanking, Mage Pet for extra damage, you have Mage Nukes and some other utility things. And then you have the Beast Lord along the same lines, except it's a melee character too, so it's not really the most usable, but you do have the pet. It does have some small nukes, it can slow. But the main reason it's here is because it does have mana regen buffs. So that could come to some use if for some reason you're obsessed with playing a Beast Lord. And I think I pretty much covered all the classes that you'd want to find usable. If there's one of the melee classes that you feel would be a good second box to a caster, besides it being your main, obviously, if you're going to take a tank and you're playing a cleric, that's not really you being like a main cleric and then like having a second character as a tank. That's you kind of playing the tank main time and then having the cleric as a healer. So that's not what's really meant by this video. But if there's some other use that you have for any of these classes or some other combo that you prefer, please let me know in the comments and maybe I'll address it in a later video. Thanks for watching.